Hi, welcome to another video on Love is Blind Season 6 and this time we'll be looking at AD and Clay. So I've already done a video covering AD and Matthew, link above. This video will build upon the points that I made about AD's past trauma and why she's still choosing the wrong men. Spoiler alert, I've watched all the way to the finale episode. I understand also that this is a very heavily edited show. I am only analyzing the characters portrayed. I also believe that people can grow and change. So I think Clay and AD are a really good example of that saying, when someone tells you who they are, believe them. So let's take a look at what Clay has been telling us about who he is. We never really talked about physical. We've been like, that is important to me. Firstly, looks matter to him. He needs to be physically attracted to you as a partner, regardless of emotional connection. It's like caring what your best attributes are. If, if I'm a propose, that's something I need to know. He also thinks the physical is the best that he can offer you. I'm like, man, who's gonna love my like personality? Stop. Like, if they don't see me, how am I gonna really capture your attention? Number two, he's a bit of a Peter Pan and he doesn't really want to grow up yet. When I first turned 30, I was trying to hold on to 29 for as long as possible. Oh gosh, why? I just don't want to age, you know? He also wants a partner who is super low maintenance emotionally, kind of like his mom or a cat. I like the fact that cats, you don't need to show them love all the time, you know? That's a problem for That's me. That's a problem, you need love all That's the time. That's a problem. <laughs> Number three, he openly admits to having a huge ego. My ego is very huge, like, and, it, and it's, it's been a pro and it's also been a con mm -hmm. for me. And this is born out of very deep insecurities that he does have. Like, I know how to, how to talk. It's just a de defense mechanism that I put a up. It's defense going, you know? mechanism, yes. Yeah. You know, I haven't cried in a while, so yeah. I, I, I'm not mad that I'm crying. I just, uh, I just want to be appreciated and, and valued healthy. for who you are as a person. Yeah but he's not really done anything about yet. I haven't done therapy and I really like big up my accolades. It's like a, a little bit of a armor for me in a sense. So he's gonna need a lot of reassurance from you, but he won't necessarily reassure you equally in return. That's all you got? What are you looking for? I don't know, maybe you telling me that you care and you will want to see me tomorrow. I don't know, some type of reassurance. Number four, he's a huge daddy's boy. My dad is one of the most smoothest and suave guys I know. Mm -hmm. I looked up to my dad. I've always felt like as a man, like I should probably emulate who you look up to the most. Yeah. You know? And guess what? Daddy is the poster boy for toxic masculinity. My mom and dad were like best friends, mm -hmm. but my dad still... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, like, he was still cheating, you know? And, like, my dad would take me with him to yeah, some yeah. of his infidelity yeah, trips. Yeah. Just a quick break to say, if you're enjoying my content, then please remember to like, subscribe, and turn on your notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. To be fair to Clay, I feel that this process has genuinely opened his eyes to the possibility of having more meaningful relationships with an alternative approach to relationships versus what his dad did. I do want to do marriage. Uh, I do want to go through some type of therapy. Yeah. with you yeah. and, and talk it out. I'm so grateful for the pod moment and like yeah. you helping me become yeah. a better person yeah. with you. You know, it's like incredible. Through this process, he was basically becoming the dating holy grail, the reformed F-boy. As a man of your caliber, to like be that vulnerable and be like, look, this is where I came from. This is what I know, but I want different is like honorable. Yeah. And if we're honest, that is difficult for most straight women to say no to, especially when you feel that you inspired that change in him. I have strong feelings for you. <laughs> At the end of the day, I'm not gonna just give up like I normally would do. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep fighting because I know you're someone special. I'm not here to play no more, you know? Clay himself had his confidence knocked by Matthew. Uh, whatever I'm doing is not enough to the point where she would talk to somebody who's a completely, well, I'm, and I'm just like, when you told me the name, I'm just like complete, just Stop. shocked. I know, I know. And in order to win AD over, he had to dig deeper into himself. And I apologize about that. And I think that's like me not kind of looking at myself in the mirror. I just like, maybe yeah. I can't get out of my own way. And I do apologize about that. But I was hurt, you know. And AD not only forgave him for being a very superficial cow, but also gave him hope that she believes in him, that she sees the great man that he actually is. You just kind of saw past my bullshit. <laughs> you really did. 
and you still like was like, okay, I, I see something in him. Like, yeah. you believe I knew there was more. And you believed in me, Ad. And that to me, that's the biggest thing, right? Yeah. And what person can resist that kind of redemption arc? In my other video on Ad and Matthew, link above, I mentioned how Ad's past trauma of having an absent father has made her repeat a pattern of going for emotionally unavailable men. And a lot obviously stems from my father. Yeah, you kind of like you were chasing a man to love you that you know just was not there. You know, then he passed. It's like you're trying to like it's like a, almost a void. You know. And Clay is no exception. In fact, compared to Matthew, Clay completely fits her usual type. Like maybe you should stop dating these players and these athletes and these ballers. If I see a red flag, I'm like, oh, well, I'll just paint my nails red to match. I think AD has dated many Clays before, but she thought that this particular one is finally the one who would appreciate her and change for her. But the difference is like every man that I went for that reminded me of you has never been this open with me. Yeah. And despite his redemption arc, I think what gave Clay the confidence to take a risk and propose to AD sight unseen is that he's probably figured out that AD can't be that bad looking. I mean, she's a cheerleader, realtor, and a nightclub rep. I'll be lying to you say that I still don't think the physical is important, but I just have a feeling that AD is definitely going to be a good looking girl. Like, Despite AD's wish for men to not objectify her. A lot of guys will really just judge me based off that alone. Like, oh, she's a dancer, she's a cheerleader. I want something deeper. Let the outside just be like the cherry on top. She very quickly reverts back to what she knows best. Oh my. My strings. Ooh. AD. Yeah. Wow. I also feel that she herself overvalues the physical as well. Like she's only a bit better than Clay. I'm just so happy and he's so <laughs> fucking cute. <laughs> he's cute. I'm telling you, he's a lecker. Mm. A lecker. Mm. So a major clash between Clay and AD was that Clay is often way too blunt and sharp with her. Work is not the problem. Work has never been the problem, ever. So what's the problem? Oh, sorry. I mean, Clay definitely needs to work on his delivery with his communication and have a bit more empathy. But based on personality types, Clay is always going to be a little too blunt for AD's liking. TI introverted thinking is naturally a problem solving function. If you present a problem, they're going to give you a solution, not emotional reassurance. They do also have FE extrovert feeling as a lower function, and this takes more energy. FE is the function that reads the underlying feeling and knows how to respond accordingly. FE is the one that offers the emotional reassurance rather than a solution. So with Clay, naturally his first instinct would always be to give you a solution. I have a great body because I work hard. I wouldn't even let you get like out of shape. Yeah, but what if I do get like... I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. I'm like, AD, get in that motherfucking gym. Oh, you're worried about being out of shape? That's a problem? I'll make sure it doesn't happen. At some point, we're gonna have children. Yeah, you gotta get right. And I'm gonna have a belly yeah. and like- And I would be in the gym with you every day. Trust me, getting you right. Oh, you're worried that it's gonna be even tougher when you get pregnant? Don't worry, baby, I'm gonna be in the gym with you. AD has FI introverted feeling hero. What she wants is emotional reassurance that Clay will still love her, however her body changes. She also has TE extroverted thinking inferior. TE is the function that enforces standards and tells people your needs and boundaries. But with TE inferior, it's going to take AD a lot of energy to do that. She would far prefer that people just read her underlying feelings and reassure her without her asking. It's going to be cringy for AD to ask Clay up front, just tell me you love me no matter what, you idiot. This is a classic tension between FI and TI dominant types. And if I'm honest, my general advice would be if you don't have the stomach for very blunt, unvarnished truth. If, you, if you were out of shape, I would tell you. That way though? Are good trainers easy on you? Honestly though, like are good trainers easy on you? And if you're uncomfortable or unwilling to be straight up with your very clueless partner and tell them exactly what you need them to do or say. You better be nice to You think to that me. was a bad delivery? I think that was a terrible delivery. I'd be like, AD, 
I, listen, I need you to come. <laughs> Clay. <laughs> no, I no, need, I need no, you, I need no, you to go no, to jail with me. No. Instead, you expect people to just know if they love you enough, if they care enough, and anything less than that is unacceptable. Then do not be in a relationship with TI introverted thinking types. A man should be fully potentialed. I think it's pretty obvious that AD is choosing Clay based solely on his potential. And I know like with me in your corner, like you're just going to be the greatest man. Like you're going to hold your head higher in a different way. Yeah. Like NI introverted intuition projects the future, the potential, things that have not manifested yet. Whereas SE extroverted sensing perceives what reality is, how Clay is behaving now, what he's doing and saying right now. What AD should be doing is to use SE, the reality, to inform her NI, her projection of what's to come. Instead, she is going purely on NI, which is the potential that she wants, wishful thinking, disconnected from reality. We talk about like love is blind, mm -hmm. but it's really, are you going to walk by faith and not sight at this That's point? It. You can see how AD is desperately trying to convince herself that she and Clay are perfect. Well, I'm being off a cliff I've without never... a parachute because I know he'll be down here and he will catch me. That's how much I trust him. When her tears show us that she does see the red flags right in her face that she chooses to ignore. The work. I uh, think that this is, can I come over there? I got a woman here. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got a woman here. Yeah. And the lesson here in general is that when we make decisions with our lower functions alone, without our dominant functions to keep balance, we tend to regret those decisions down the line because it usually means that we've made those decisions when we were not in our best state of mind, when we're stressed, feeling cornered, or very insecure. We just mesh together so well, like almost like perfectly, I would say. Yes, it's really a recipe for greatness. So fast forward to at the altar, the fact that AD was so shocked that Clay said no. Uh, I just don't think it's responsible for me to say I do at this point when I still need work. And Clay was so shocked by how badly she took it. And I appreciate you and I know that you will fight for me <laughs> and we'll let it work. I know, but I, I, I can't say I can't say yes right now. It tells me that there was some huge misunderstanding between the two. I think what happened is that Clay thought that he had sufficiently warned AD. I, don't know, I really don't want to let you down, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel that like... Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, just like how divorce, how it just like, how it really just tears up the household, that's big to me, you know? That even though he wants to commit to her, he is also nowhere ready for it. With her, it's so easy to get married, mm -hmm. but it's so tough to get out of yeah. it. Like, my, like I told you, my dad cheated year seven into the marriage. So it's like, I got that on my mind of like, damn. And Clay bangs on about this repeatedly and probably thought that this would definitely prepare AD for when he says no to her at the altar. Watching Love is Blind last yesterday and kind of seeing the examples I saw, I was like, wow, like that is what a husband is supposed to come. Like he says all the right things. And it's like me, I don't. I don't there's a lot of things that way I think that I don't think is mature enough for a marriage. And I think Clay's plan was always to not marry AD at the end of this process but to continue dating her after filming. You know, like, you're my best friend, so it's like, one thing I don't want you to feel like, like I'm like backing out on you. Because he does recognize that she's good for his mental development. He's like, oh, A-D all day? Is that what it stands for, all day? Basically, she's not all day, she's one day. He also wanted to make it all the way to the end on the show. So in order to stay on the show till the end for clout, but also not hurt AD with his decision to say no, he thought that he would give AD plenty of heads up, but not directly tell her to avoid her leaving the show early. For me, I just feel like love is love. Like why does the date have to dictate well, our relationship? Unfortunately, instead of hearing red flag evacuate the area, AD heard, fix the hole, fix me, please. I'm very fearful. I'm not afraid. Mm -hmm. And I think right now it's a time where you are and you need me a little bit more. Yeah. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. And after watching the finale, I think what angered me the most in the end was Clay's arrogance and how he blatantly took AD for granted. 
Clay did not take AD's ultimatum seriously at all. I don't think I could like continue to like date you after mm. if it's um if it's a no. Yeah. He thought that they could still date even though he said no. Clay's arrogance was that he thought he went about everything the right way, gave AD plenty of warning, and so she will understand and agree to still date him after filming, but this time completely on his terms and his timeline because he thinks that she loves him that much. Me saying no was not to you, AD. Like, I'm not ready. You are a perfect girl. I'm not, I'm not rejecting you. There's a part when AD was saying, what am I going to do now? What am I supposed to do now? Clay was so self-assured that he thought she meant, oh, what am I going to do? Don't leave me, please. What do you mean what am I supposed to do now? What am I supposed to do? You think I'm leaving? <laughs> when in reality, what she meant was, now you force me to dump your ass. Yes, I'm done. Clay is also really selfish because he only thinks about what he's gained out of this relationship with AD. He never considers what's in it for her. Yeah, like, I, I feel kind of like a sacrifice. Like, you learned so much about yourself. Yeah, yeah, and, like, I get that. You used me to like, yeah. do it. So I think Clay not only got his ego, his bravado from his dad, but also his dad's lack of accountability. To be very frank, Clay's dad has totally messed up Clay's view of love and marriage. And you would see how it would be confusing for little Clay when his dad brings him along on daddy's little infidelity trips. You know, my dad was married to my mom for 25 years. My dad used to take me with him when he used to cheat on my mom. My mom never knew that. I want to know where you in love the whole time, you know, because I've seen him from a different perspective and there's a gray area when it comes to marriage. Clay is going to think, okay, so mom and dad look like they really love each other, but dad cheated on mom for years and brought me along to see it. But then everyone says that a good marriage involves being faithful. So then how do I reconcile all these contradictions, especially if I cannot bear to think that my dad was actually the villain and not the hero of my story. He struggles with a marriage. Is it sacred? Mm -hmm. Do you honor? He struggles with that. And a lot of that stems from things that you have to explain and then apologize. Mm -hmm. And Clay's dad takes zero accountability for the choices that he did have control over. I didn't, I didn't necessarily have the best role models in my life. I know, I know. You know, I can't ever remember my father ever being a part of my life. And sorry about this rant, but by Clay's dad's logic, if he's effed up by his parents, and there's absolutely nothing he could do about that in terms of effing up his own kids, then he shouldn't be having kids. No one with past trauma should be having kids. But that's obviously not it. It doesn't mean that we have to pass on that brokenness to our kids. Absolutely. How we can take back control and responsibility in not passing on generational trauma is to do our own inner work. If you don't get freaking help, you bring that shit into the next thing. Face up to our inner demons and process our deeper pain, not relying on someone else or external validation to sort us out. I met you, you know, tell me somebody like his mom. Yeah, but you met me, but you wasn't good to me. We can only do our best with the hand that we've been dealt, but we all have personal responsibility to choose to do our best and break the cycle. You now have the opportunity to do what, whatever you think we could have done better on. I feel the main message we should all learn from AD is that Yes, gaining self-awareness and awareness of your past trauma is a huge step, but it's actually only the first step towards healing. Lots of people have been bothered by AD and ask, if AD knows it's a red flag, why is she still going for it? The thing is, self-awareness alone is not enough. What AD is missing is her sense of self-worth. Everything I have in my life I deserve and I got it and I worked hard for it. Everything except love really, truly something that I don't think I deserve. You don't think you deserve love? Even with self-awareness, if you do not love yourself, you'll keep choosing people who reflect your low self-worth and be in relationships where you are carrying the whole thing because you're going to choose someone who does not love you equally in return. And I keep like doing so much for these men 
and carrying these fucking relationships. And like, it's just not fucking enough. <laughs> and I don't actually judge AD that harshly. In fact, I've been her, many of us have. Healing is a long, long road and it's never a straight road. We need to make very conscious choices to keep ourselves on the good but unfamiliar path. First, we gain self-awareness, and then we learn to accept ourselves and love ourselves radically, and not rely on other people for that validation. It's only then that we can start to avoid the familiar path of self-sabotage. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope it was helpful and interesting. If so, please like, subscribe, and share to support my channel. I've developed my own methods of interpreting personality types and behavior. If you would like us to analyze your personality type and make sense of your relationships, communication, and decision-making, then please find booking details in the description box below.